wrecking ball. <laughs> Thank you very much, D-Man. We are indeed joined by Reckless. Do you like that nickname, Wrecking Ball? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys did actually play like a wrecking ball in this game. Very good. Um, let me take you back to the beginning and the picks and bands. It seemed like you guys were not clear on to deciding on that last band that came out as Lulu. Was there a lot of discussion about that? Uh, well, pretty much we planned to ban Yasuo and Rice because they're really good at those champions. And then since we're second pick, we have the last ban. So we pretty much keep it for a situational one, depending on what they ban. And then we just thought that we want to get a good ban and pick phase here. So we ban Lulu so they don't get too strong and we only get two as well. So we got two for one, kind of. Does it make it easier, the fact that they've got a player, a mid lane player that plays Assassins, but Cassidy's not there and you've got one extra ban? Well, I actually don't think Cassidy is that strong anymore. Um, he has such a high risk in the early game, like you can really punish how he works as a champion uh, until the point where he actually becomes very strong. Um, so I don't think Cassidy fits really in the meta anymore. And I'm not sure when he will either, but at, right now I don't think he does. So Kassan obviously wasn't in the game, it was LeBlanc that they locked in as the first pick. And um, you guys seem to react with a ton of rotations in that early game. As you look at all of them after, what was kind of the goal for you guys when you started doing all those rotations? Uh, well, pretty much. Uh, LeBlanc is very strong against Gragas 1 versus 1. So we wanted to keep us against LeBlanc and Gragas against it too, because Gragas has a very easy time just clearing the waves, right? Um, and we tried to force them to follow us all the time because they might have faltered in one of the rotations, but I think they did it pretty well. So pretty much we just ended up trading farm and both of the farmers get a bit low because we were just running so much, right? Uh, and then we had Jinx, so taking towers is of course a prioritizement. And we managed to do have some good rotations and got top tower, mid tower, and bot tower. Pretty good. So after getting that far ahead, we actually saw around the Baron area a five-man crescendo from them. First of all, what, what's going through your mind when you realize that five of you guys are dancing around next to Baron and all their teams there? And second of all, was it just the fact that you were far too far ahead at that point, why it didn't cost you? Uh, I think we were just too far ahead at that point. Uh, even though we all got CC'd, they, had, they didn't have the damage to follow up the CC pretty much. Uh, but of course, props to Mixka for landing such a good ultimate. Like, I didn't have flash, I think, that fight, so I couldn't really dodge it, but he had some really good ultimates this game, actually. So. Um, indeed, Flash, very important on Jinx, as you don't have any other escape mechanism. Why did you choose to go for Jinx again after you've kind of ignored her for a while? Um, well, pretty much as I said, uh, we wanted to get the two versus one. And the AD pretty much has a free lane in a two versus one. You don't have any pressure, you're pretty much just farming. And I think Jinx is in a way sort of as a Caitlyn. She works sort of the same. Uh, and the fact that Jinx scales better, I think, at personally at least, she's more valuable to have in the mid game, late game than a Caitlyn. So getting her through the laning phase for free with a two versus one was pretty useful. And then I just thought, why not, kind of. If we look at the standings right now, we see that you know Gambit, Fnatic, Alliance, SK as well, all up there. The, the teams I think everyone expected are certainly Gambit, Alliance, Fnatic up there at the top of things. I mean, who's been the biggest surprise for this year? You guys had a brilliant start, but then we all know fell off a little bit. Who's the surprise package up there right now? Uh, I would say SK, actually. Uh, they are really good as a team, and I think that's their strength. Like, you can say that they don't have the best individual players, but they really cover it up by having one of the best team plays in Europe, and that's where they win the games. They all have superior rotation, superior ban and pick phase, superior team fighting. Like, they're really good together, and that's why they are where they are today. Well, you guys are pretty good at rotations as well, of course, as demonstrated in this game. Very nice victory. Uh, thank you very much, Reckless. And now we're going to go over to Quickshot and D-Man to check out the standings.